According to Norse mythology, Vikings killed in battle were led by Valkyries to Valhalla to join Odin in a great battle. The reflections on the Valkyries' armor illuminated the night sky. In Finnish legends, fire foxes ran through the sky so quickly that their tails would brush against the mountains, creating sparks. And in indigenous Sami legend, souls of the dead illuminated the night sky. If they noticed you, they would reach down and carry you into the sky or cut off your head. Algonquin legend tells that the creator of the earth moved to the far north and lit a fire to let his people know that he was still thinking of them. Inuit spirits of the dead played games with a walrus skull. In Estonia, sleighs carried guests to a wedding in the heavens, and in Greek and Roman mythology, Aurora, goddess of the dawn, raced across the sky in her chariot to alert her brother and sister of the new day. Before we get going, I want to give a quick thank you to my friends over at Artlist for sponsoring this video and sponsoring this trip out to Iceland. If you haven't heard of them before, Artlist is a huge library of music that you can use for your projects. Music is something that's become increasingly important in my work over the years. It plays an indispensable role in setting the tone and pacing of my videos. So. Having a resource like Artlist at my disposal is huge. Sound design is also an indispensable part of filmmaking and they have a huge library of sound effects that you can download as well. And it's super affordable for online creators like I know many of you are, starting at just $10 a month. For this video, I wanted to find tracks that captured the spirit of the Northern Lights. Something magical and celestial, but also a little mysterious and eerie. So I used their search tools to narrow it down and find like ambient, mysterious sounding tracks and was absolutely stoked on the results for this one. So keep an eye out for the music as you're watching the rest of this video. I can't recommend it enough. So if you wanna try it out for yourself, you can use the link in the description of this video to get an additional two months completely free. It's thanks to sponsors like Artlist that I can go to these fascinating places making these videos for you and not go absolutely broke in the process. So a big thanks to Artlist again for sponsoring this video, sponsoring this trip. And now let's head back to Iceland and talk about this absolutely ridiculous <sighs> natural phenomenon. Hiking up to the highest point on this island. You can tell it's the highest point because the trail goes straight up. We're in shambles, but looks like we are about to crest the top ridge. This all starts with the sun. The sun is a huge ball of energy and it sheds some of that energy in the form of ions that drift out into space. The sun actually has its own weather. There's a continuous stream of ions heading out into space called solar wind. There are solar storms where a lot of ions are pushed out into space. And there's an 11 year solar season with a peak when solar activity is highest and a valley when it's lowest. Sort of like a solar summer and solar winter. Night one in Iceland and we seem to have gotten quite lucky. We are chasing a bit of aurora right overhead. Uh, just settled into camp, had some fish and chips from a little restaurant down the streets. And now you can probably even see them behind me in the window. We're heading down to the other side of this island we're camping on, hoping to find a spot with a nice composition, something. It's a, a bit of a mad rush. I don't think we expected this Yeah. night one. <laughs> That's so crazy. Like literally the whole sky they take up. Nuts. Wow. wow. That's stupid. <laughs> Should we pull over right here real quick and see what we can see? Yeah, see, what, see what's up? So the sun spits out all of these particles and some of them will eventually reach the Earth. Now, they would destroy Earth's atmosphere and kill all of us, but the Earth has an invisible magnetic field that protects us from just that. The magnetic field deflects most of the sun's ions, they basically bounce off and continue into space, but some of those particles get through. If that happens, they're steered toward the magnetic field's auroral ovals, these two big rings around the North and South Pole that act almost like a holding area for these particles. If you look at the aurora from space, you can actually see the shape of the ovals. And all of the places where you can usually see the aurora, like Alaska, Finland, Iceland, are right underneath those ovals. 
After those particles from the sun penetrate Earth's magnetic field and get taken to this holding zone, they collide with the Earth's atmosphere. And to understand this part, we need to zoom way the hell in. The Earth's atmosphere is full of oxygen and nitrogen atoms. And now you've got this ion from the sun coming in too. If that ion touches one of those atoms in the atmosphere, it creates what you can think of as a tiny molecular spark. Now, zoom back out and picture billions of those sparks happening at the same time, and you get this. Wow! Wow! <laughs> it's absolutely tweaking. <laughs> oh my gosh, I think it just happened to you. And also the fact that we're able to see him like naked eye and have him still look green and stuff. Right? It's ridiculous. I don't know, I don't think those are normal lights. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> The aurora usually happens about 50 to 150 miles above the Earth's surface, and the color of the lights depends on their altitude. At lower altitudes below 60 miles, nitrogen is more plentiful in the Earth's atmosphere, and when the sun's ions collide with nitrogen atoms, they create purple, blue, and red displays. At higher altitudes above 60 miles, oxygen is more plentiful and produces those green displays. And the swirling shapes of the aurora follow moving lines in the Earth's magnetic field. That blew my mind and is part of this that I'm still having a really hard time wrapping my head around. I'm gonna go move this time up over. We got a hot spot. It's like a constant game of <laughs> just chasing these, trying to figure out where they're gonna be. And then the moment you get it set up, they move. <laughs> The aurora doesn't only happen in the far north. These shapes and colors actually have a mirror image near the South Pole called the Aurora Australis. And similar displays happen on most other planets in our solar system. Whoa, dude, this is unbelievable. Yeah, this is crazy. Well, it looks like it's dying down now. So, maybe we'll get some rest or something. Decent night? Yeah. Honestly, I was a little worried that expanding my understanding of this phenomenon would kind of ruin the mythical side of it, the mystique, the legends. But I think it's had the opposite effect. I've come out the other side even more fascinated and with my mind even more blown by what has to happen to make these lights appear. Dude, look at that over there. That's not magic right there. I think it's magic. It's 100% magic. They are truly a wonder of physics, of chemistry, of astronomy, of science. Dang. Yeah. Dude, look at them dance. Wow, man. That doesn't mean it isn't magic. 